Uh, I'm going to just take a couple of minutes to share uh, with you a little bit about the evolution of this set of stone centers that Jim uh, spoke about earlier and offer a glimpse of, um, of where we're going, I think, in the future. So let me just step back to 2014. I had the opportunity to meet Jim Stone. I went to, to meet with him in his office in Boston. We had a long conversation about income inequality and his particularly strong concern of wealth inequality um, and the institutions that shape both high and rising inequality. And um, that was the beginning of a, of a multi-year conversation. I think more memorably on that day, he spoke about sort of, a, I think at the time, mostly a, a vision and a dream about, um, about helping to launch a set of centers um, for the study of inequality, especially wealth inequality, but also to help reshape um, the profession. So I think it's fair to say it was really mostly a dream and a vision. I, I hope he would say the same. Um, but here we are eight years later, and it's really quite remarkable what they have built and, and what's been achieved. So just briefly, I'll tell you that um, throughout the second half of the 2000 teens, um, Jim, with Kathy at his side, uh, supported and launched five uh, inequality centers. The first three um, were Harvard and Brown in the United States and INSEAD in France. And the fourth one was ours at the Graduate Center, which is the doctoral granting campus of CUNY, the City University um, of New York. And I just want to take a moment to say that when, the, when their gift was given to, to CUNY, it was really um, an extraordinary moment for us there. I think, um, and my colleagues in the leadership of the university were quite excited. Of course, we were very happy to have resources to build capacity uh, for teaching and research on inequality, but also um, it was seen as a signal, I think it was a signal of confidence in our large uh, urban public and immensely under-resourced university, one whose official mission is to raise uh, intergenerational mobility and, and decrease inequality in the city of, uh, of New York. And so um, it was really, uh, we thought, and I still think an excellent marriage of scholarship with the mission of the university, and I think that was something that Jim uh, and Kathy came to really prize. Um, the fifth center after, was formed just after us, and that was Berkeley. I might add another public university. That's my, my song to sing. Um, and then we moved into, I guess, what we might think of as phase two. The sixth center was named here at UCL, the Stone Center. And um, uh, I know that Jim and Kathy and many others are extremely thrilled because of the um, embeddedness of the core project here. Because again, Jim had a, talked a lot about a dream, which I think I know would sound lofty, but maybe less so now that they've done this. And that would be to help reshape economics pedagogy. And so we're better. Um, and how, 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 there's no, other, no, no better way to do that. So the seventh center then was named at the University of Michigan in the United States, also headed by um, a, a remarkable team. It has great progress, they're great promise. They're moving into a big study of, uh, of wealth mobility. Um, so here we are, really, after, um, I guess it's eight years later, again, as I said, since I first um, uh, heard of this idea about building a set of centers. And now um, I, we're really at, I think, an exciting stage, um, reaching various periods of maturation. And now we're beginning to talk about synergies and collaborations across the centers, which I think is really exciting. I happened to speak yesterday for almost an hour to uh, to Margaret Weir at Brown. We begin to began to envision a, a joint conference on wealth inequality and democracy. I had a wonderful long meeting with Wendy today and talked about a contribution that our center might make um, on wealth inequality across countries and over time to the core project. So um, so that's where we are. I'm immensely grateful to be part of this um, endeavor, and I'm really looking forward to the next phase of more growth and maturation and innovative collaboration. And we hope many of you will come along on the ride. <laughs>